Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, everybody, we finished the retaining wall. This is part three of building a retaining wall. Okay, it's cold, it's definitely cold. And the rain's been kicking in lately. So we're trying to backfill this retaining wall before it all turns. But first step, drainage. Drainage in the most simplest sense. Think about it like this, you basically want the water to filter down and get to the lowest point of the wall and escape. That's the simplest way to put it. But there's a number of things that you have to do in order to achieve that. It's hard to see with all the dirt and everything everywhere, but we've scraped down to the clay and created this channel here. That's gonna be the lowest point that the drain sits on. You can kind of see that it's already working. So it's looking good, it's going to plan. The water's going where it should. Polythene. So the only purpose of this, in this situation, it makes it so there's no resistance on the wall. It just hits this polythene and goes all the way down. All right, that's one wall with polythene on it. Now, you might be thinking, or you might not, I don't know. Um, the drainage material is quite, you know, the drainage material is quite rough and this stuff is easily ripped. We need to protect it from the scoria. Pido is here to protect it. Hey, Pido. I'm the protector, bro, the wall protector. And then when the scoria goes against it, it shouldn't rip and now it's raining. This here isn't really waterproofing, um, it's more water diversion. It's just a way of giving the water a path of least resistance. So rather than soaking into the timber and weighing the wall down, the water will hit this and go right down to the drain and get out of here. That's the idea. So it, it might be a little bit overkill for a timber retaining wall like this, but um, whatever helps the drainage. The force from the water is what can cause the most damage on retaining walls. I'm, uh, I'm filthy, but the wall is looking very tidy. All the foam in there, all the DPM in there, the polythene, whatever you call it. Now the next step on the drainage journey is to get a bit of this stuff here. This here is a uh, geotextile fabric. What a geotextile fabric does is it filters the water. So rather than just all the mud and water going straight into your drainage, the water goes through the geotextile fabric and the mud stays on the other side of the fabric. A few moments later, geotextile fabric with a bit of scoria on top. Alright, so I asked every plumber and uh, every plumber's friend what to do with these pipes and they all recommended the drainage coil here as usual but at these joins we're using PVC pipe and you can actually get drainage coil connectors but uh, they charge like three or four times the PVC pipe so it's not necessary so we're going with PVC pipe and we're using PVC tape to join them Pretty much ready to backfill now. The digger driver's here. Just waiting for the digger to turn up. And I'm just doing the last minute, last minute things like this. It's just a ventilation for a sewer pipe that runs down there. It doesn't smell, which is great. Just make sure everything's 100% before we start filling. Exciting. All this work for this moment. She just went into a drawer. Hello. Hey.
Well, all I'm saying is I just want to look back and say that I did it the best I could while I was stuck in this place. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it, bro. Good work, eh? We did it, Pato. Fucking high five camera. High five. All backfield. Bit of leveling out to do. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's nice and straight. Got a bit of leftover stuff here for the trench to take the water right out. But there we go. Oh my god. Thanks for watching this exciting episode and uh, see you guys in the next one. All right. <laughs>